So what I'm, I'm going to talk to you about tonight is prevent, this is preventive legal stuff, okay? It's like, you know, if I were a dentist, I'd be telling you to floss your teeth and brush, right? Okay, this is the equivalent of that. When the cops stop you in your car and or come to your house, this is what um, we're talking about, okay? Is your personal confrontation with the police. And the name of this presentation is Shut the Fuck Up. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I don't now, know. I could have called it Shut Up. But what I'm concerned about is that when you're sitting there with the cops, you actually remember what I'm telling you. So I'm going to call it Shut the Fuck Up. Because yeah. I'm hoping you're going to remember that. Cops are tricky. Uh -huh. And what they want more than anything in the world is for you to talk to them, usually. Now, uh, let me say this. If they have enough evidence to arrest you, they're going to arrest you. And there's nothing that you can say to stop that. So don't even bother trying. Ain't going to happen. Keep your mouth shut. You know, I'm here to promote one right tonight. Of all the various rights, civil rights that you have. The most important right as far as I'm concerned, looking at back over 18 years of criminal practice, if I could tell my clients in the past what one thing they should have done to avoid getting in trouble, it would have been shut the fuck up. Yes. Because the only reason that the cops are going to ask you questions is to get enough evidence to arrest you and, and convict you of a crime. They're, they're not making casual conversation. And whatever you think you, you're going to tell them that's going to be helpful, probably is not. Okay? And most of them figure if they give you enough rope, you're going to hang yourself with it, and it's probably true. Here, here's how the process goes. The cops arrest you. They put you in jail. They go back to their little office, and they write up a report. It's called a police report. They send that police report to the district attorney's office. A lawyer in the district attorney's office, a deputy DA, looks at that police report and whatever other evidence there is, forensic evidence or whatever, and they decide whether to charge you with crimes or not. The police, now, this is important, the police do not make that decision. That's a decision that's made by lawyers. So whatever cops tell you about whether they think what you're doing is legal or not, Disregard. Um, some of the weird things that I'm hearing cops saying in San Bernardino County. Uh, we don't have medical marijuana in this county. How many of you heard something like that? Anybody? I, I hear it a lot. I hear it a lot, and I've heard it recently. Okay? There are cops in this county that at least say that they, that they believe that there's no medical marijuana. Okay? Don't argue with them. You're not going to convince them, even if you open the code book to Health and Safety Code 11362.5 and stick it in their face and say, what, is this, what does this say, officer? Or you talk about Kelly, or you talk about whatever. Uh, they don't care. It's lost on them. So, the best thing to say is nothing. Now, cops are tricky. The cop says to you, well, Mr. Uh, Jones, um... If you talk to us, we'll go easy on you. Yeah, we'll let you oh, you've heard that one? You yeah, just, no, we'll we just want to know the truth. Okay, that's a lie. They don't want to just know the truth. They want to know something that they can use to convict you of a crime. And they're not going to go easy on you. They're lying. They're going to turn around. Now, maybe one in a hundred really means that. But play the odds, you guys. The odds are 99% of the time that cop just wants an admission from you that he can use, that he can put in his police report, that a lawyer will read and charge you with a crime. Okay? Favorite cop trick. We'll go easy on you. Here's what happens. The cop pulls you over, and he says, uh, Mr. Jones, do you know how fast you were going? Well, you know, any way you answer that question, you're screwed, right? You know, I was going the speed limit. Well, no, you weren't, you know, and if you don't know that you weren't going the speed limit, then you must be high or, or something, right? So that's the wrong answer. If you say, I was going 85, now you're admitting to 
So what do you really want to do? You want to keep your mouth shut. What you want to do is say, you know, officer, whatever you think, write it down, give me the ticket, I'll be on my way. Now, that's going to be hard, because in a traffic stop, you really are supposed to cooperate. But I think there's a, a more important test out there, and this is the test as far as I'm concerned. And in, in, in my personal situation, if I'm confronted with police, this is the test that I most often apply. And that is, am I free to leave? If the answer is yes, then leave. It's that simple. If the answer is no, then technically, I believe you're under arrest. And at that point, your right to remain silent kicks in. Now, understand that that right, it's the Miranda right that you hear about on TV. You have the right to remain silent. Okay. That right kicks in in the following situation. When cops ask you questions. So, you know, people ask me all the time. They go, well, when they arrested me, they didn't read me my rights. Well, they didn't ask you any questions, did they? Well, no. Well, then they didn't have to. Oh, yeah. They can give you a field sobriety test. You don't have the right to refuse that if you're driving a car. Implied consent, right? All right. So, um, they can uh, give you a breathalyzer. They can take you back to the station, give you a chemical test. They don't have to read you your rights to do any of those things. Don't be confused about that.